Hi, it's Alaska Granny. We've been living through uncertain times and it continues to go on. The future is uncertain and there's just so many weird things that we've had to deal with. Well, just in my own life in the last several months, uh, we've been through a couple of big earthquakes. We've been under a tsunami warning. My son's house burned down. My daughter's electricity was out for over a week last winter when she had a newborn baby and a two-year-old at home. And when you look at other places, there are wildfires, there are severe droughts. There's just crazy things going on. One of the priorities I made for myself for prepping was to put together some additional supplies. So for some reason, I had to leave my home in an emergency or I was away from home and for some reason I couldn't get back that I had enough supplies that I could actually shelter in place in my car. What if you actually needed to stay in your car and live in your car? We don't know what the future holds. It's been crazy. And when my son's house burned down, it was nearly impossible to find another place to live. It's just uncertain and so maybe we need to make a plan that if we did need to stay in our car that we could. I've been gathering prepping supplies and putting them in this big bin. I probably won't keep them in this bin in the car simply because when you're in small spaces it's better if you can put things into duffel bags because you can push them into nooks and crannies and shuffle things around a little easier whereas the big box is going to take up a big cumbersome spot that even if you put it in a duffel bag, you could even put it down on the floor, behind the front seat, things like that. You could stick them into the little corners in your trunk of your car where a big container doesn't work. But to just toss it all together as I collect things, this is where I'm putting it. So I thought I would show you the things I've collected so far and explain to you why I chose those items and maybe figure out if I need to add more. The first item is a first aid kit. Everyone needs to have a lot of first aid supplies because in times of emergency that's when people get injured or they become sick and you may need to take care of yourself. You don't want a small cut to become infected or diarrhea to turn into dehydration which can actually be life-threatening. Get a basic first aid kit and then add to it as you can and the things that you think you need. But starting with a basic kit is a great way to get started if you don't have very many first aid supplies and most of them even include a first aid guide so it can help you know what to do in emergency situations. Next I have a little cook set. I have a can of Fancy Heat which is like Sterno from the Dollar Tree. I have a folding stove where the Sterno canisters fit right under it. I have a little cook set that has two little pots and a lid. When you're trying to prepare food and your fuel is limited, it's very important that you have a lid. Just like when you're cooking in your house. If you put the lid on, you can have less heat, things heat up faster, more thoroughly. And so if you're ever outside and you're trying to just boil a little bit of water, it's going to boil and come up to heat much faster with a lid on it because the heat isn't escaping up into the air. So make sure your emergency cook set has a lid. Look at this little tiny sleeping bag that I found at Fred Meyers. I was looking for just an inexpensive bag that you could use in the car. When I saw this one, it is very compact. Just look how small it is compared to a regular sleeping bag. So this can take up almost no room and it will provide the comfort. Yes, you could have something like a Life Bivy, which is a thermal bivy bag, but that's not going to be comfortable if you're planning on it to sleep. Those are more for like emergencies. This would be more for comfort. And I already have a sleeping bag liner that I could put inside if it was extremely cold or if someone else was in the car with me, then we would have two options. You have one, I have the other, and it could help keep us warm and comfortable. I bought another Life Straw water bottle. These are great. You can use any kind of water and the filter is built in and you have the convenience of drinking out of a water bottle rather than trying to use just the Life Straw when you can drink out of a stream or something. You can't bring that water with you and this has the way that you can have water with you and no matter where you get your water, it's going to be filtered and it will be safe to drink. Having enough water is critical no matter what the emergency is. Every single day of your life, you need at least one gallon of water to provide the amount you need for drinking, for cooking, and for basic hygiene. And if you look at how much you really use on a daily basis, 
it's much more than that. I have the Eaton Scorpion, which is an emergency radio and flashlight that you can wind it up, you can charge it up, it has a solar panel, it has AM, FM, and it even has a little bottle opener on the side. A radio can help you know what's going on. If you're not able to communicate, you want to at least know what the news is, what are the conditions, where can you go that is safe. It depends on all of the different kinds of emergencies, but it also then would have a little bit of entertainment that you could have a radio to listen to that can help you not only know what's going on, but to soothe you if you can hear some music that you enjoy. Plus having the built-in radio makes it meet more than one use, which is a great way when you're picking out your emergency gear and your prepping supplies, try to find things that can be useful in more than one way. So a flashlight radio would meet that specification. It has a little carabiner clip on it, so if you needed to hang it on your backpack or hook it to your belt loop, you could have this handy wherever you would want to store it. You may have seen in another video that I did about a collapsible portable toilet. This is a portable toilet. I ordered it on Amazon and look how flat it folds up. It has four pieces. This is the actual bucket section. And when you want to use it, you open up the bucket. Then it has a flat disc with a little tab on it. You stick this down in the bottom of the bucket. Make sure the tab is pointing up so that you can easily remove it again later. Then you would line it with a plastic bag and it has a seat cover. And there you have it. It's about nine or 10 inches tall. It's a sturdy little toilet. It can hold up to 220 pounds and it even comes with a little lid so that if you wanted to keep it, say, in the back seat of your car or at your camping site, or if you wanted to set it out on the ground, you could also use it to store some of your things if you had it open. One of my viewers said that would be great if you needed to store, say, dirty diapers. You would have a little sturdy stool that you could store things like that in it. Then when you're done with it, you can remove the lid, take off the seat, remove the bag, then you pull out the disc, then after you take out the disc, you can just fold up your bucket and it'll go flat again. And all of it is ready to go back into the carrying case. When I put it in the carrying case, I put the round parts first and then tuck in the bucket. And then I like to store the big white kitchen drawstring bags for a portable potty use because these are a great size. You can pull up the string and zip them up tight and roll them around a few times. Then there's also room in here you could add some baby wipes and some toilet paper. It's a great little portable toilet. I've been glad that I have it and it's sturdy and nice. If you're looking for something for hygiene issues, you might consider getting one of these because you can use them in your home or in your car depending on what your emergency is. This is something that I got I thought would be excellent for just road trips in the summer if you're going out in the woods. It's like a screen that you can put over the car window, then if you wanted to roll the window down, you have this to keep the air from blowing in. It keeps the bugs out. The first time I went to Mozambique, one of the guides had actually taken window screen, rolled the window down, and then sewed it around the rim of the car so that you could have the window down because it was hot but yet you could still see out and bugs couldn't fly in and that was really handy.
the other one? It comes with a set of two. So if you wanted to do front and back windows, you would need to order two sets. And you can see it's just like a big springy net, like a mosquito net. But it's dark because then it's like shaded also. Say you have children in the back seat of your car. Then you slide this over. You open the car door. You slide this over the window part. And then you can shut the car door. And it's half in, half out. So it's not going to blow away. And you have the ability then to roll the window down or up. So it gives you screen. If it's hot, you can have the window down. And when you roll the window up, it also gives you some privacy because it's dark. So there's a set of two, so you would want to have a set for the front or the back, depending on what the window situation is in your car. You can see it doesn't take up any space, and it's a really convenient kind of an item to have when you're going out in your car. It helps make you comfortable, which is the whole point of we want to be comfortable in our car. We never know what can happen, so I have some instant fire. Instafire is a great way to start a fire in an emergency because it works whether it's raining, snowing, the ground is wet or not. Put some of this down, add some little tinder sticks and light it up and you can start a fire in no time. I always store the Instafire in the Ziploc bag simply because it's a chemical. I don't want it to leak or spill on anything. I also want to make sure if there's any fumes they don't get into anything else. I have some big black plastic bags. You can do so many things with these. I made a video about all of the different ways you can use a giant black plastic garbage bag and I'll put a link to that video. One of the things I like to do is tie them with the hair ties, the hair rubber bands. They last way, way better than just a rubber band. So look for some of the hair rubber bands and keep that with your supplies also because they just really don't break. Even if they stretch out and they're not springy anymore they don't break whereas plain old rubber bands just rot and break i have some hot hands which are hand warmers you can find them as body warmers foot warmers you can put them in your shoes put them in your pocket it's a great way to have instant heat to keep you warm and they can last for some of them up to 10 and 14 hours so look for something like the hot hands which are hand warmers. You need to keep them airtight because it's the oxygen reacting to the chemicals inside that activate them. And so if they get a pinhole in them, then they're not gonna be any good when you need to use them later. So keep them stored where they're not gonna get poked or torn open until you're ready. I have some tropical fruit trail mixes that I got at the Dollar Tree. These each have four little pouches in them. So they're a very sturdy container. And then there's four single serve sturdy little packets inside each of these and so you don't need to use the whole entire bag and the others are going to stay fresh and uh, these are really delicious so if you see them at the Dollar Tree check them out. Next I have some Mountain House and some Alpine Air Meals. These are dehydrated, they're designed for camping and they're really good. You add hot water, you seal up the pouch and you just let them steep and warm in the bag. But the nice thing about them is even if you don't have hot water, you can open the bag, add cold water, and use the zipper seal on it, and then allow it to just rehydrate. It won't taste as good, but it will come to the correct consistency over a longer period of time. So even if you can't heat up water, you can still utilize these meals. They're great because they come in a whole bunch of different types of flavors, so you can certainly find some that you like. But make a note to yourself that the Mountain House have a 25 year shelf life and things like the Alpine Air and some of the other backpacking type meals only have about three years in them. That's why they have like more interesting flavors because the combination of all the ingredients just can't last in your shelf as long as what's in the Mountain House. You can find them in breakfast entrees and then lunch or dinner and then you can have a selection of the meals that you want. I bought this little lunch box at a thrift store and it's an insulated lunch bag. If you were out in the cold and you wanted to heat up a Mountain House meal, you could tear it open, add the hot water, then you, it has a zipper on it, like a Ziploc, then you could put it in this and it would be your little meal cozy. It would help keep it warm because it's insulated because your meal needs a little bit of time to rehydrate and then it's still gonna be warm when you go to eat it. It's gonna taste better if you can have it still be warm. 
I have a Mylar bag of Cheerios and these are nice because they have a zip top and so you can put your food in here and seal it up and it's going to last a long time. If you wanted to put this straight into food storage you could also take your heating element and seal across the top but it isn't necessary to seal it up because these zip zipper tops are very sturdy bags so you could open it up take out some squeeze out the air and seal it again and then you can continue to use the bag no it isn't as airtight as if you use an oxygen absorber but you can continue to utilize the food that's in here i like to save the oxygen absorbers for foods that i'm going to use in the longest lasting food storage in the deep storage that i don't intend to use anytime soon this I know will last like this for a few years and so this is perfectly fine way in my opinion to store this to last for my needs. Whenever I put meal kits together I always take a Ziploc bag and add some paper plates, some paper napkins, a few orphan uh, forks and spoons and a couple of the P38 and the P51 or the military style little miniature can openers. They're very sturdy and they last a long time. They take up almost no room and you can buy them in a big old pack from Amazon and have a whole bunch of them that you could put them around in different areas in your prepping gear. I made a video on how to open a can with a P38 or a P51 so if you're not familiar with how they work I'll put a link to that video so you can check it out. Little things always fall to the bottom. I have a USB rechargeable flashlight. It's very bright and I like these a lot and so make sure you have a few flashlights. So between this one and the wind up one that's the Scorpion radio, that's two sources of flashlights. And because this one is USB rechargeable and the Eaton Scorpion is wind up and solar, I should have some opportunity to make sure that I can continue to have a little bit of light. I have strike on the box matches and one of the long utility lighters, I always call them clickers. I would be able to light a fire if I needed to and light my little stove so that I could heat up my food. So make sure that you have multiple ways to do the most important things and that you have a variety of supplies. I still need to add water which is a challenge because I live in Alaska and so if my vehicle is outside I don't like to store water in it because it's too cold and it'll freeze. One of the strategies that I try is to take something like an empty Gatorade bottle and I only fill it about two-thirds full because then those are really sturdy containers and if you leave extra room then you have the expansion that water expands when it freezes and so then you're more likely that the water will still be able to be used that your container is not going to be destroyed but then you also have the predicament of now my water is frozen so that's when you need to make sure that you have some way to heat it up. I also have a Silcock key and this is like a plumbing tool that where buildings have the outside water faucets but they don't have the handles on them like we do at home and so then I always thought this was something just the janitors had and I never knew where they got them but anybody can buy one. One of the stems on the Silcock key should fit most outdoor faucets so then you could turn on the water if you needed to because if you're living in the car you need to be able to access water somewhere and you may be in an urban environment and if you've ever been out just driving around walking in the city and look you'll see that the water faucets have just a little stub but they don't have a handle and if you have a Silcock key you could turn one of those on access some water but then make sure you turn it off again Add some warm clothes, some sturdy shoes, a few toiletries, and cash of course. And then you want to make sure that you keep your car at least half full of gas. And then hope for the best. I hope I never need to use any of this. Wouldn't that be great if my life went along so smoothly I never needed any of this? Then it was certainly worth the investment. Prepping is lifestyle insurance and we insure so many areas of our life. Why not our safety, our security? and our ability to feed and keep ourselves warm. Why wouldn't you want to do that? It only makes sense to be a prepper. You're providing the things you need to make your life run as smoothly as possible. And I certainly don't want any more challenges, but I've been through things and I know I can do it and I'll be able to face whatever comes my way. And so will you. The more things you've been through, 
the stronger you are, you need to remind yourself, I've been through hard times, I can face things, I'm never gonna give up. I'm gonna try to keep a positive attitude and make the best out of every single day that I have. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.